Super Talk Mississippi media production. Discover the Copaya Advantage. Copaya County is a Mid-South gem with a spirit of opportunity, a business-friendly environment, and access to major transportation networks. Copaya County, let's do business. Visit copayaworks.com today and discover the Copaya Advantage. She was a long time coming. And for Dad, who worked in a Mississippi lumber mill and a plumber, and Mom as a midwife, Mary was born 14 years after James and Katie tied the knot. Not only that, they were so sure that Mary would be a boy that a name was already picked out from the moment they learned she was pregnant. But thank goodness she was Mary, because the world became a better place when the good Lord sent this angel to sing. And it all started with a bit of Mississippi magic. More after this from Divinity Equipment. You want another reason to act now on that tractor that you've been needing so badly for so long? How about this? Up to $2,000 cash back or 0% APR financing for 60 months on BX Series Kubota tractors. Ready to take on your task. Hang on, there's more. If you're going to go into hunting season with an RTV that's on its last leg... Divinity has zero down, 3.99% APR financing for 60 months, plus plus $1,000 instant rebate for cash on the new RTV XG850 Sidekick. So what else do you need to know? Check them out at DiviniEquipment.com or come see us in Jackson or Highway 51 North in Madison. And by the way, that cash back can also make an additional bit of Mississippi magic, if you know what I mean. <music> And now back to this podcast episode of Mississippi Magic titled, The Angel Sings. Look, doting parents are justified when you've waited 14 years for your angel to arrive. And an angel she was. Mom bought her a toy piano at three years old. And the talented youngster learned to sing the songs her mother performed in the Mississippi Church Choir. Now, every parent thinks their child is the next great star. But as Mary found more confidence to sing around others and test her ever-expanding, unusual talents, everyone who heard her said this child had the voice of an angel. Well, by the time Mary made it to kindergarten, Mom and Dad were convinced that it was a talent that had to be nurtured. And the one thing she needed was a real piano. But in those hard times in Mississippi and the small town, it wasn't that easy. Money for anything outside food and shelter were just not possible. But the need to hear their angels sing and grow in her love of music forced them to be a bit creative. They decided to trade in the family record player, the center of their nightly entertainment, as a down payment for a real upright piano. Mary's talents continued to impress everyone, not only in how she sang, but almost as impressive, the songs she was performing. History records that one day when she was 14 years old, she took a school trip from her small Mississippi home to the capital city of Jackson, Mississippi. That changed her life. The performance she witnessed as a young girl was by Marian Anderson, one of the most celebrated artists in the 20th century. A woman who had performed at the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C., and that held even more significance since both Mary and Marian were African-American. The 14-year-old Mississippi kid was captivated by her voice and the manner in which she told the story of a song, even though Mary couldn't understand a word of the song or the story itself. Even so, from that moment until she graduated from the local public school in Mississippi, she immersed herself in that music. As her voice became even more mature, it became an instrument of power that no one could overlook as very, very special. After attending college in Ohio, Mary's destiny was written. She entered New York's Juliet School of Music, where she studied until 1952. From there, the world would be her stage. The Mississippi child whose parents knew she had the voice of an angel, they were proven right. Mary Violet's angel voice took her to worldwide acclaim for not only her undeniable talents, but also as breaking the glass ceiling as the first black singer to gain international stardom in opera, an art form previously reserved exclusively to the upper-class white society. 
And by the way, she not only broke the glass ceiling, she became one of the most popular American classical singers of her generation. She graced the stages of the most celebrated venues. She entertained millions, including fans such as Presidents Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan. From a lifetime of acclaimed Broadway performances to one of the Metropolitan Opera's most celebrated stars, she mesmerized audience around the world with each incredible performance, from London to Paris, Berlin to Moscow. A long way from her home in Mississippi for a little girl who had the voice of an angel. Along the way, Mary Violet earned a multitude of honors. The Presidential Medal of Freedom, the National Medal of Arts, 19 Grammy Awards, a Lifetime Achievement Award, the National Endowment for the Arts, and even an honorary doctorate degree from Boston Conservatory. And one more, the awards presentation tribute to Mary at the Kennedy Center Honors in 1980. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Zubin Mehta. I was standing behind her in the chorus, in the fourth row. <laughs> when she sang Aida for the first time with Herbert von Karajan, she said, I used notes I didn't even know I had when I sang that performance. Well, ladies and gentlemen, when she sings with me, I hear notes I never even knew existed before. And for this, and for the standard that she has kept up for all of us, I would like to salute her. There is a full and earthy richness in her voice like none other in this world. In 1955, NBC made a daring decision casting her in the lead role of Tosca. Eleven stations in the South, including her own home state, failed to carry this historic moment. After a stunning Aida in La Scala, she had only one great stage to conquer, the Met. She was determined that her debut here would be a triumph. Her ovation lasted a record 45 minutes. Now she was asked to open the new Met at Lincoln Center. I'm grateful to God for this privilege, this honor. I am exhilarated beyond belief and excited completely out of my skin. <laughs> I am also excited because tonight my hometown, Laura, Mississippi, is now connected with our broadcast. And this makes me so proud of them. I cannot possibly tell you. She has blessed the world with a voice as beautiful as any in memory, and to her artistry, a dignity unsurpassed. That's right, Mary Violet was born and raised in our hometown of Laurel, Mississippi from two wonderful parents who waited 14 years to have a very special angel. A child that they were so sure was going to be a boy that he was already named Leon. But mom and dad changed the name of Leon and Mary Violet went on to change the world of opera. Not as Leon, but as Mary Violet Leon Teen Price. Forevermore, an angel's voice with overtones of Mississippi Magic. A Super Talk Mississippi Media Production.